Hi there, it's Marlene Hilema from ImageMavenVideo.com and in this video I'm going to be testing out various video sizes and formats to see which is the best for importing into Explaindio. Alright, let's get cracking! Okay, for this presentation I'm mostly going to focus on things that involve adding photos and adding videos to your Explaindio videos. I suggest you have a look at Sarah Arrow's introductory review on Explaindio. She goes over how to add slides, what kind of slides to add, and things like that. I'll post a link to her video in the description here as well as on the blog post. Okay, so I've got four slides set up into my timeline and the first one you can see is an animated character. And if I go into the text area, of course, I can change the text and Sarah did talk about how to do that. Now if I want to add an image you can see that I have a background image area available and it says here it'll import a JPEG, PNG, GIF and SWF and AVM2 animations. So what we're going to do is just import an image. Keep things simple. We'll browse to an image. I have a folder of images ready and this image is 1600 by 900 pixels. I will open that, which means that it's larger than the HD background, which is fine. It will scale into it. And you can see now that we have an image behind our animated character. But, you know, I prefer a plain background myself, so I'm just going to leave that one as is. Let's have a look at this slide, which has two image areas, a background image and image area one. Image area one would be inset into this blue box. And it also has a video area that it, you can import a video area and I believe that is just the background. Let's just go with images for this one. And I'm going to leave the background image blank because it's got already enough going on. Image area one. Let's put something in the box. Let's put a nice shot of Bondi Beach taken from a recent trip to Australia. Thank you, Sita. And you can see now that the image fits nicely in the box. Now just for fun I'm going to remove this image and I'm going to browse for a different image which has a little bit of a skinnier size. Let me just pause and you can see that there's more of a blue border on this one because it didn't quite fit proportionally. Alright well let's leave that the way it is. That looks fine. This next slide has a background image and two other image areas. So let's experiment with that. So let's do a background image. Let's do this one. If you're an Aussie you will no doubt recognize this road. Image area 2. I think this is the one I want for that. Yes, and you can see that image area 2 fits in to our lower thirds area. And now you can also see that it's a bit skinnier, so perhaps a different image would look better in there. Uh, but anyway, just for demonstration, this is fine. It, it still has the purple border, which hmm, I'm not that fond of, if you want the truth. But now we're going to add image area 3, so we will browse for one more photo. Let's put that Bondi one back in. And you can see that the Bondi one is smaller than the background image. Now, if we wanted to make this a little bit simpler, Let's change that up and maybe put the clouds in the background. There we go. That's a much more simpler composition. When you start stacking images, you have to kind of make sure that they look okay. But we can also move that image area 2 over. And let's move that over so that it's maybe to the side. And let's work on image area 1 and let's make it a little bit bigger. So we'll scale it this way and we'll scale it this way. I just kind of want to keep it in proportion. So to keep it in proportion you should scale those at the same rate. Oh there, there we go. That fits much better into that little box and I've removed the purple borders. Okay, the slide that we just added photos to also has the ability to add video. So I'm going to go to the video tab and we have two video areas. So I'm going to choose video area one, which is typically the background, and I'm going to browse for that. And I've got a roller derby clip here. Now the clip is six seconds long, and it's 1280 by 720p. 
My slide is 5.3 seconds long and the length of your clip should sort of match the length of your slide. If it doesn't, you can do some tweaks to fix it, but they're very close. I'm not worried about that 0.7 seconds at this point. Okay, let's add our second video. Uh, one thing I want to mention is that Explainedio only imports MP4 and FLV video formats. So if I'm browsing for a video to import, you can see here that the MOV file, which I shot for this with my camera, is grayed out. So that means it's not available. Another thing about videos that you import, if you have video clips, you will notice that you can't trim them in Explainedio which is too bad because what that means is you actually have to take your video clip into another software first, trim it, and then export it, and then bring it into Explainedio. And let me show you what I mean by that. With this clip, you can see that I'm close to the camera, then I back up, I sit on my stool, and then I get ready to record my video. But I had to take this into a different video editing software first to prepare this clip for Explainedio. All right, so where am I looking for here? Okay, so my inset clip, I have an edited clip here. It happens to be 25 seconds long. So it's a bit longer than my slide, quite a bit longer, but we'll just import it anyway, just to see how that looks. Okay, so we've got a picture in picture situation here and I have offset this a bit. So you can see that I've, with my X offset, I've moved it. Originally it was plunked in the middle there you go, I could put it back there, it can line up, you know, alignment is kind of an important design thing. And if I want to extend the length of that slide, because you see originally it's 5.3 seconds, if I want to play this video in inset right to the end, of, I'm going to have to add some time to that slide so that it will do so. But for this slide I'll just leave it as is. Let's go to one last example. This one has a background video area. So I'll browse for that, and I think I'll just take the same one I just used. You can see that I've already added some text to the little fly-in green blob. Okay, now one of the things is that this video where I'm speaking is 25 seconds long. So I'm going to extend the time of my slide so that more of it will play. I won't play it right to the end, but just so that you know that, just a reminder that if you have a longer clip, than your slide, you need to extend the time. One more thing I do want to mention though is that you can add an audio track and I have pre-recorded an audio track for you. Uh, it's very easy to do actually. I'm going to show you how to do that. You can click on the little microphone, set up your, your mic. When you click this again, you can it'll play the show. You just do your voiceover with the show. So I could say, hey, this is Jenny. Jenny just took a trip to Australia. She's learning how to use Explaindio, so she's adding pictures and videos to her presentations. Here's one that she did with an inset with Marlene talking. And here's Marlene's talking head with some text flying in. They had a great time working out all the possibilities of Explaindio together. And I finish that, close that. And that becomes my voice track, my voiceover track for my slideshow. So that's done. I'm going to save it before doing anything else because I made all these changes. And now what I want to do is I either preview it or I create my video. So let's do a quick preview first. Okay, you can pretty much see that's working okay. Let's render the video next. Okay, so my show is all set up. I've got my five different slides and now I'm going to create video. So I click this and I've done a bit of testing with all these settings, by the way, and I've noticed that when you have video imported into your show, you need to use the perfect settings because perfect isn't perfect, at least not with this version of the software. You do lose a bit of quality. That's just what happens with any time you render a video, whether it's with high-end software or Explainedio. A video compression and rendering is about compromise. So you want to put it somewhere and you want to give it a name. So we will start export. We'll give it another... I've done a couple of these, so I'm going to call this three. 
anything that has a video in the frame will take a bit longer to render. And you can see, I don't know if you can read this, but creating video from slide one. And it's still working. Now it's working on slide two, which had some photos in it or a photo in it. If you have videos in your presentations, you have to wait probably at least five minutes, depending on the length of your show. My show is only 30 seconds long. If your show's a, you know, a couple minutes, you're going to have to probably wait quite a while for it to render. So be patient, go grab a coffee. And now it's rendering the audio and our export is complete. Ooh, can't wait to have a look at it. Hi, this is Jenny. She just took a trip to Australia. While she was there, she went to Bondi Beach, drank a lot of coffee, and was daydreaming. She met up with Marlene and they went to a roller derby match. And then they spent some time in the studio figuring out the best video formats for Explaindio. So here's some final tips. If you're going to use video in Explaindio, set your video capture size to HD, so 1280 by 720p. If you're going to only use those inset videos, you can shoot at 640 by 480p. Make sure it's in MP4 format if you're shooting out of a camera. If you're importing from another software, you can also use flash videos, FLV. One thing you want to do is trim your clips before you import them so that they come in clean and you have no junk at the beginning especially. And you're going to have to adjust the slide length to match the length of your video. The best photo formats are JPEG and PNG and as far as photo size, 1280 by 720 pixels will fill the whole background if it's a whole background slide you want to fill. Or if you're using those smaller inset photos, your image size can be smaller. Keep in mind if you stretch or scale up those small images, you will lose image quality and you might see some pixelization. All right, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. It's Marlene Hilema from ImageMavenVideo.com. Hey, do me a favor. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and sign up for updates on my blog. Thanks very much and take care.